What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ozzy Hongos. I'm your host as always, and this is the first annual Camera Awards 2021. We reviewed several cameras throughout this channel's lifetime, and I think it's finally time to give some gold stars to many deserving cameras. We'll be ranging from the camera that everybody should own, the most nostalgic camera, the most valuable camera, and of course, we always have to mention <laughs> cameras that just was not worth the price. The first category of cameras is the camera everybody should own. I'm not talking about your phone specifically, but just a system that really brings value. Anybody can use it. Nobody has to be an expert in any way, shape, or form. And it's just kind of automatic and does the job. That award goes to the Fujifilm Instax camera. Fujifilm is synonymous with photography. Even if you don't know anything about photography, you still recognize the images that come from this camera. They have a particular look. Fujifilm really took it to a brand new level when they reintroduced this camera. The best thing for me is the tangibility that comes from the photos. You never really get to physically see your photos on a frame. And I think this is a great way to get into that. I think it's important to print out your photos. It's an overall inexpensive camera. You can probably find these on eBay for maybe 50 or $60, which isn't too bad plus the film, but this is kind of like downside at the moment with film, it's kind of pricey. However, this film, I haven't seen a rise in it at the moment as compared to all the other cameras that we'll be discussing, but it's essentially $1 per photo. Now it's up to you whether you like it or not, but I always save mine for special occasions, but it's an overall really fun camera. It's really cheap in the build quality though. I'd say it's a medium build and it has a great flash. And every time I've used this flash, the camera gives me excellent results, especially when it comes to the skin colors. Just make sure to stand at a good distance so you don't get a ghost face. But overall, this is a system that I recommend to everybody because you have your digital photos and now you have your physical prints. Following that up, we have our most nostalgic award. This camera system is one that I didn't care about the price point, how hard it was to find, or any hidden cause. It was about the feels and the sentimental value that it had to me as an individual. And I feel like you guys already know which one I'm gonna pick which is the Sony Hi8 system. If it wasn't for this system, I would have probably never gone into photography or filmmaking. At the point where this camera was being released, uh, I bought it with my own money. I saved up so much money because I really wanted a camera. It came at an interesting time where it was, you know, the in-between digital and analog. And this camera kind of captures that in a great package. I absolutely am amazed by the level of engineering that goes into something like this, the transition from analog to digital. I can go on and on about that, but you can check out my full review for all these cameras in the description down below and in the annotation over here. But I absolutely love the sounds that it makes, the way that I try to attempt to do something really difficult and bring it down to the consumer. Because at this point, filmmaking was just this Goliath that only certain individuals had access to. And the more that cameras like this came out, the more people got interested. And while we kind of have all this on YouTube and on the internet, and I'm just really grateful that it came out at this point. So I was originally a Sony boy from the start. Who knew? Do I care that it's hard to find certain types of film? Yes. Is it annoying to have three dongles to transfer one file onto my computer? Yes. But I really love it. And I wouldn't trade this camera for any of these systems at any time. The reason that I also chose this system in particular is because it gives me the VHS look. I know a lot of individuals are trying to shoot eight millimeter, but there's a hidden cost, a really big hidden cost with eight millimeter, which is that you have to, you know, send it out to development in like an actual lab, then they have to transfer it to digital. And with this, you only have to buy the dongles one time, uh, plus the cost of film. I really love this camera and I feel like it's placed right where it needs to be. Next, we have the best camera to start off with. This system does not have to be expensive. It's not hard to find and it has a lot of features which will enable anybody with any sort of knowledge to get a good and decent exposure right at a camera in automatic mode. And once they've learned a little bit more about photography, gives them the opportunity to go into manual mode. This camera award goes to the Canon EOS 300. I've done a review on this camera. It has plenty of features to get anybody started from its manual mode, aperture priority, and it gives you a wide range of Canon lenses. If you go on to eBay or some secondhand marketplace, you're able to find a 50 millimeter lens at an inexpensive price for probably around $60 plus film. You get yourself a lens, a body, and you're ready to go out and shoot. 
what makes this a great camera system as well is the amount of focus points that it has for a film camera. Now, don't expect there to be focus points everywhere. The best focus point is the middle one. And oftentimes I would use the middle one to compose and then recalibrate from there. Also, you get your meter inside, which will let you know if you're over or underexposed. I'd probably say that the only part that's knocking this camera is its build quality. It's very inexpensive, very dirt cheap, but this is actually my second EOS 300 because I dropped it from like three feet uh, and then it stopped working. So that's the downfall of this camera, but you can always check out the full review right here. Next is the best value camera. I don't mean value in the sense of price, but in its usability and features, the results that it gives the user regardless of skill set. This award goes to the Ricoh GR1. Uh, I've talked about this camera at length. I absolutely love so many things about it. The only caveat right from the gate, I'll say it is its price point and difficulty to find coming in at nearly $500. It's a very hard camera to find in good condition. And once you do, it's definitely a no brainer. What really blows my mind about this camera is its compactness, the flash, it's very, very small, but very powerful overall. The lens quality is right up there with Carl Zeiss and its portability. It just, it's just astonishing that such high quality images can come from such a small body. I just really think that this camera is one that everybody should own, but unfortunately not everybody can. Um, and that's why it is the best value camera. So congratulations to Rico on that. For every most valuable camera, there's also some dead weight. The camera that just didn't stand out after the review. And I wonder why I even reviewed it in the first place. Because I felt like if I bought a McChicken, it would have just been a lot better as that provided me some sort of nutritional value. But unfortunately, this award has to go to the flip camera. It's a camera that hit me right in the nostalgia when I first purchased it, as I really wanted one of these when they first came out. The build quality is really poor. It's made out of plastic all around. It does take AA batteries, but the problem is that it only lasts five minutes, regardless of how much charge I have within that battery. It's one upside though, is its ability to transfer via HDMI onto your computer. And it gives you a really nice VHS look for the price point, which is about $15 to 20, depending if you want the box or not. But we all know we want the box. So <laughs> probably around 20 bucks. It's just not special. It's not cool. It didn't do anything. And you should spend your money elsewhere. So congratulations, Cisco. You don't even make cameras anymore, but that's where you stand at in 2021. Lastly, uh, and of course the process of elimination, I think you know which camera deserves the most valuable player, the Nikon FM2. It's an absolutely stunning camera, a camera that just gets so much right. In a time where cameras are so perfect in every way, shape, and form, this camera is absolutely stunning and I really love everything about it because it just gets to the core of photography, capturing the light as best as you can, giving you a few assists here or there, but never going over the top where it essentially takes away your job, which it feels like now cameras are starting to do that. I love the build quality, the way it feels in your hands, the weight, uh, just how clicky it is. Nikon's a wide range of lenses that if you start off with this camera, uh, you would just be able to find your photographic style in so many interesting ways. The downside though, as I always mention, I feel like this is a commonality, is it's around 200 to $300. It's not the highest, but it's also not the lowest, so it stands right in the middle of the pack. And what's really interesting and something that I wish I did throughout my review is use the upper viewfinder to get, you know, just better results. And, you know, I just love so many characteristics that I can't put in here. It was still in the early stages of the SLR system that Nikon put this out and they just really hit home run after home run with this. I just can't say enough good things about it. So congratulations, Nikon. You've won the most valuable player for 2021. If it were up to me, I would go in the following order to buy these cameras. I would start off with the Canon EOS 300. I would start off with this for sure because it's really cheap. The build quality might not be great, but they're easy to source and that's what's important. 
then I would go the Fuji film, then I would go the you know, then I would go the FM2, then the Rico, then this and don't don't even bother with this, you know, I just chuck it somewhere else. That wraps it up for right now. This is a bit different as it is the end of the year. I wish you a happy holidays and make sure to follow me on Twitter and upvote me on the foundation app as I am trying to sell some NFTs. Final announcement, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I put a buy me a coffee down below a link. If in any way, shape or form, I provided value to you, uh, you can buy me a coffee or give any sort of money that you deem is worthy as I'm trying to keep the channel moving forward, but I do it with my own cash, right? So film's getting expensive. These cameras sometimes are hard to source, but that's not gonna keep me from making these videos, right? So I would really appreciate it, but if you're in any like financial situation or problems, please do not give me money, figure out the situation first. And then if I provide a value to you, then the link will always be down there below. At the end of the day, thank you so much for your time and your attention. Happy New Year and happy holidays. My name is Isaac Mihangos, and I'll catch you in the next one.